Yo guys, as promised in the last video, I'm gonna look at a question of one of you and answer that. It's, um, it's a pretty general question, so it probably takes me a little time to answer, but it's quite helpful because Kieran Lawton asks, when do you see limping as a good strategy? And also post-flop calculating a player's range dependent on your stash their position on the table. Good to hear your thoughts, Henry. GG as always, but as most people know, limping isn't really like a normal strategy. There's a couple of spots where like most regulars limp though, and that's for example in the small blind at like 25 big blinds or below that. When you have like let's say 25 bigs and you're gonna raise your ace eight, you face a champ. What are you really gonna do? You don't feel comfortable about the spot. Obviously, if the opponent is rejamming quite a bit and you have a read on him, you can make the call. But usually, you tend to just start flatting in these spots with all of these hands a flop really well, right? Like if you raise fold queen check suited, you're doing a huge mistake. If you limp it, he's probably going to 3x or 4x and you have an easy call and play pot out of position but with a strong hand. So in these spots, it starts making a lot of sense trying to see many flops with a weak big blind range when he checks the back. And if you face the raise, if you have a good hand to just see a flop with. So usually at like 25 big bands and below, it makes a lot of sense to just start implementing a limping strategy. You can have some hands that you want to be raising with that stack depth and raise call and some with, uh, if you want to raise fold as bluffs. Generally it doesn't, like it isn't too bad to just start limping all of your hands, you know, start limping, let's say you have 16 bigs, start limping all your ace eights and like limp calling them, just jamming like the weaker aces and just like limp trapping with aces through nines or something like that. So besides the fairly obvious small blind limp, it also makes sense to limp hands on the button. Especially when you are like 20 big blinds deep and you have two aggressive players behind you in the blinds. When you start raise folding 10 9 suited, check 10 suited, it hurts really bad because these hands have great equity and play really well post flop. So if you start limp calling those 20 big blinds, 25 big blinds deep, you are allowed to see a pot in position and don't have to fold your hand pre. So when it comes to people's ranges, it's not easy to analyze them all, all the time. Using something like a hut helps quite a bit, where you can just um, look at their VPIP or PFR and therefore analyze what their range looks like. If you look at a spot like this, this is like a usual low check open of like 50 big blinds that I put in here. And now you can deviate from that, right? Like if you have a guy that likes to limp a lot, let's say he starts limping 50% of hands, suddenly he's going to be limping like quite a few of these suited hands that look kind of pretty. You know, so everything that's kind of connected and now we are like at 50%, usually people still like raise these stronger hands, sometimes they limp even these and just like have a 100% limping range. But that's just something that you got to make up in the top of your head, mind. Like right now this would look like a 50% limping range. Um, obviously it's not perfect, you know, some people might be limping more of those and a little bit of less, less of those, but that's not really that important to you. What you just got to realize is like what the normal strategy looks like and then what your opponent is probably doing you know let's say like this is a normal range um, about like 22 percent i'd say from the um from the low check you know now we are 22.47 percent i think that's fairly reasonable for some regulars some obviously will start mixing more of these and so on but these are like small little differences and you just got to find that out yourself pretty much so it's like not e always easy to analyze that but if you have like a basic idea that you people are opening around like around these type of hands, then I would recommend using something like Equilab. Just look at certain people range, like ranges when you see like people are opening 23% from that position, you can check out what it actually looks like. And then when you start like changing that a little bit, when people start obviously raising more, and when you see that people are always like to limp aces for some reason, you can change that as well. And you can just check that out yourself. Given like a general answer is obviously tough. When people start opening UTG, they probably like get much tighter. And only like will open something like that. I'm gonna start folding some of these smaller pairs, maybe something of like that. Usually, I think we get into more of an ideal area. It always depends. It's like a 13.5% range now. People are different. Everybody does something different. What is you up to you is to keep an eye on the table, what people are doing, what they are opening, and then he using a program like Equilab helps you out quite a bit where you can check out what a range like that looks like. And when you see that ace high board, you usually see, oh my God, there's quite a few ace in that hand range. I should rather be tight and so on. So obviously like there's also different ICM spots when people on final tables just open 100% on the button, you know, sometimes it's viable to actually start opening 100% on the button, you know, like I have a pretty wide button opening range versus some people where I just open like any suited hand. I'm literally opening some new suited on the button because the blinds are not defending enough. So you just got to figure out for yourself what you want to be opening and what you expect your opponent to open and as i said like using a hut like i don't always want to like advise taking like 
um, using a hard for online poker i think it helps out quite a bit i'm a little bit of a math guy so i like to look at these spots and analyze them and using a hard just helps out quite a bit there when it comes to people's preflop ranges and obviously once you know what people's preflop ranges look like you can also play better versus them post-flop you know when you know that somebody has 50 percent of the hands post flop, people connect way differently with certain boards than other some people are only flating like 8%, 6% of the small blind, and most of them are suited connectors, meaning that if the board has like a low, lot of low cards, they are never connecting. There's other people out there, again, that like to uh, like call like 30% out of the small blind. Suddenly, these guys will connect with these like 7, 6, 5 boards and so on that most people wouldn't. So it's always tough to calculate the player's range there, but I think this is like a great way to start getting more and more info about it. A lot is just learning and just get improving over time. But I hope I could help you out a little bit. If you have any more questions, guys, about these spots, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm going to be here for a couple of minutes. Well, not for a couple of minutes, but I'm going to read through them and reply to most of them. So feel free to do that. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. If you want me to do more videos like that, definitely leave the like button and let me know what you think about it, what I could improve as usual. So hope you have a great day and good luck on the tables. Peace out.